respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, and leadership. The one thing you can do to get it and keep it. So by the end of this episode, you will have been able to gain influence so that you have a team that wants to work with you, not just a team that's forced to work with you. It's a team that's ultimately going to be more loyal, hardworking, and empowered, and selfishly, so you can do with more with less and with less people issues. Sounds too good to be true? It isn't. So keep watching. My name is Daryl Black, and I am taking my 30 years of experience on the front lines of emergency response and emergency management, responding to disasters, and I'm taking the lessons I've learned in those environments and helping you apply them to your personal and professional lives so that you can lead better, you can be a better leader, better parent, better partner, all of those things. So why does all of this matter? Why do I have a podcast? Why am I doing all of this work? Why am I trying to get the message out? Well, frankly, I think that we are as disconnected a society as we've ever been. And that's not just at work, but that means at home and you know where we play, all of that stuff. I just don't think that we're where we used to be or at least where we need to be. And we need to have some help with that where we can now become a lot more connected than we've ever been so that we can be a better connected leader, a better connected parent, a partner, connected coach, all of those, those sorts of things. What is a connected leader? And in the context of what we're talking about here, leader is not just a leader at work. A leader, we are all leaders in fact, but a leader in this context is Yes, maybe uh, uh, it is a workplace where you're a manager or you're a supervisor. Yes, you should be a leader there. But also at home as a parent. I know I have an 11-year-old dude and uh, it's it's a constant leadership challenge with him and, and I, I love it. Maybe it's being a better connected partner. So that means on the personal level that you're uh, able to communicate more effectively, you are a better listener, you're able to really um, uh, strengthen the relationships that you have. So in summary, a connected leader is one who connects and then leads. So a self-aware leader is one that facilitates and, does, and doesn't dictate. It's one who leads through respect and not fear. One who leads with inspiration and not exasperation. And one who is vulnerable, empathetic, compassionate, and calm and expects the same of those around them. That is ultimately where I want to go with my message. And I think that if we are all more connected in this crazy world of ours, I think the world will really, really be a better place. So before we get too far into it, some announcements. Uh, so tomorrow, which is uh, Wednesday, episode number 17, which I recorded last week live, is dropping. And that is the number one source of influence a leader needs to lead effectively. So we discussed what, what leadership is, the role of the leader, uh, what a connected leader is. And you know, we just went through that a little bit. Uh, the role of stress in leadership and it uh, and in connection and, and making people feel empowered. We talked about five sources of influence and the takeaway was to pay attention to how you lead and interact and it's exactly the source of influence, the one in particular that we'll talk about some more, is respect. Keeping in mind that everything you do either contributes to that respect or it takes it away. But more on that because uh, that's what this particular episode is all about. But uh, but certainly, please go ahead and, and uh, fire up that episode 17, uh, wherever podcasts are, Apple Podcasts, Google, SoundCloud. I am super, super excited because I am heading to Nova Scotia, which is on the East Coast um, of Canada. And I'll be doing a couple things. I'll be doing a session on crisis leadership for the Canadian Volunteer Fire Service Association. So kudos to them. The CVFSA is uh, an association that represents 
Canadian Volunteer Fire Services. And Volunteer Fire Services make up a vast, 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 vast majority of the emergency response um, mechanism and framework that we have in Canada and the United States and, and indeed throughout the world. So they are volunteers, but they are no less lesser skilled than their paid professionals. So I'm really, really excited because the CVFSA it holds a special place in my heart for sure. I, I have so much respect for what they're doing. So I'm doing a session on crisis leadership and then uh, I am doing one of the keynote speakers. So uh, by the time the recorded version of this drops, um, I will have attended CVFSA and have given my session and my talk. So um, so yeah, super, super excited about that. I've also been deep diving into business. Oh my God. Um, kind of a long story, but one of the challenges I have and uh, had was just the amount of content that's, that's in my brain, trying to get it out uh, into some sort of a format in a regular basis without absolutely kicking the crap out of me. So what that meant was really opening the hood. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, I, I have a couple of businesses on the go. I have my uh, DDB, which is this work, but then I also run a pretty damn successful business called Exigent, which is specific to high-risk environments, police, fire, EMS, search and rescue. Uh, so, but in particular on the DDB side, um, really opening that hood and figuring out how best to pump out as much quality content as possible without it killing me, essentially. Uh, one of the downsides of what I do on the DDB side is, and Exigent, but I have so much freaking passion for um, what I do, you know? And it's one of those things you just, you can't put it down, uh, which is great because it doesn't feel like work, but it's really bad because once you're in, you're totally in, you've got blinders on and, and uh, you're kind of off to the races. So tough to get perspective. But suffice to say, since I attended the Power of Success um, event a couple weeks ago now, uh, that review will be up soon, uh, I've really decided to uh, re-engage and refresh and, uh, and lean in a lot more. So stay tuned for a lot more content. So a review with regard to what we covered off last episode, and that was the number one source of influence you need as a leader to lead effectively. So what is leadership? It is social influence, which maximizes the effort of others to achieve a goal. Okay. Social influence, which maximizes the efforts of others to achieve a goal. Then we reviewed sources of influence. And starting at the least powerful, which is what we call position power, and it's literally just rank, you know, where you are in a hierarchy in an organization. And it progressed through a number of them to respect influence. And respect influence is the one that we're really going to be deep diving into tonight um, and in this episode, because it's one thing to talk about how powerful it is and why, but it's quite another to actually make it happen and, and build the respect. So that is what this episode is all about. And specifically, I'll give you a couple of um, very concrete, specific examples or uh, techniques and concepts that you can apply starting tomorrow kind of thing. So, uh, so stay tuned for that. Now, one of the reasons that uh, the respect influence is indeed so powerful is because as we talked about in the previous episode, it really doesn't hit just your cognitive. It's actually hitting what we call the subconscious or a little bit more viscerally. And specifically, the reason that you, you, uh, you re follow somebody, the reason that from a leadership perspective, you are going to go to hell and back. And trust me, I've been in situations where it was pretty much that kind of equation. But the reason that you have leaders that, um, you'll follow is because you respect them. And that respect power, that respect influence is not just cognitive, but it's actually deep, it's visceral. And by that, I mean, it really resonates with your values. And so what is a value you ask? Well, a value is something that essentially think, says, um, you know, what you kind of hold 
to be important to yourself. So uh, this is kind of a self-righteous term and I don't mean it to be, but um, would be something like a moral compass. So in the absence of clear direction, it gives you a direction. And when, when we find a leader that has similar values to us, or at least values that, that we like, we will actually be far more apt to follow them than if it's somebody that's a, that's a, a crap rat, essentially. So if it's somebody that we don't respect, if it's somebody that doesn't, you know, value the same things as us, we have a hard time with it. So that's why we try to get to respect influence because it's visceral. It's now at the subconscious level and you're tapping directly into values. So that's all well and good with respect, uh, influence, but, oh man, it's freaking hard to get. And one of the ironies is it's the hardest to get, but it's the easiest to lose. And gone are the days when, you know, when I first started an emergency response, for example, respect was actually given to the leader first and foremost. So just by virtue of the leader being there, I handed my respect off to them. I thought, holy shit, they're in a good position. They know their stuff and uh, I am going to respect them and their experience. Well, unfortunately, nowadays, or if I, I don't even want to say it's unfortunately, I guess, um, but the reality is, is that now respect actually has to be earned. And so that's what we're going to be talking about here. And now you can agree or disagree all you want, but the reality is, is when I'm a leader and I walk into a situation, I'm using position power to start, but man, oh man, I need to start getting to that respect power as possibly as quickly as I can, because I don't have it. It's no longer the case where the team gives it to me automatically. And then I just go about my business. It, that is, those are our, our long gone days. So what is the one main way of getting respect influence and, and climbing through that position and all those other sources of influence we've talked about in the past? What is it? This is going to sound insanely simple and maybe oversimplified, but here it is to get respect influence. You must give respect. All right. Yes. It's that simple, at least in concept, in practical application, therein lies the challenge, but we'll help you through that. Respect, influence comes from us as leaders, giving the respect out first. Yeah. All right. So let's get into it a little bit more. Think about it in your own life, right? So you have a leader that, um, let's go back to that whole, you'll go to hell and back or you know, maybe that's a pretty extreme example, but it's somebody that you really, really respect. Chances are, chances are you respect them again, because they align with your values, but I can almost promise you 99%, the leader that you respected the most was a leader that respected you. It was a leader that treated you how you would like to be treated. So, you know, the golden rule where treat others and, and, uh, you know, how, how, uh, you'd like to be treated. There's going to be a little bit of a switch on that. Realistically, as a leader to build respect influence, you have to treat others how they would like to be treated. Okay. You need to treat others how they would like to be treated. Not you, but they. So here's an example from, from my own life. When I facilitate programs, I've been doing it a long, long time. Uh, the reality is in a certain culture, let's say emergency services, there are certain nuances of facilitation that um, I can kind of get away with. Maybe my language isn't going to be 100% pure. Maybe my humor would be slightly sarcastic and inappropriate. So in that environment, that is something that actually people, it kind of resonates. That's, that's really the culture. And that's the way I prefer 
you know, that's the kind of working environment and the, the, the uh, education environment that I like. I like a lot of banter. I like a lot of humor. I'm not that sensitive. I'm not easily offended. But herein lies the problem. While that connects really, really well with a certain audience of emergency services workers, that is not the approach that is needed for other corporate environments or home environments. And I learned that lesson a few different times because I recognize being very deliberate to it, knowing that some of my slightly off-color jokes or my sarcasm maybe didn't, um, wasn't really well, extremely well received. Now there's always polite laughter, but I recognized pretty early on that certain audiences and certain individuals responded better to less dark humor, less sarcasm, especially when you haven't built that connection yet. So even with my facilitation, I've had to really curb what I say and what I do, and that's okay. It's not the end of the world, but it's not how I would like to be taught or how I would like to be led, but it's how the folks on your team would like to be led. That in, therein lies the exact, the, the, the linchpin and the challenge of leadership. And I don't care really what you think with regard to, well, hold on, they should just respect me. I'm their leader. Yeah, too bad, so sad. That's not the reality. The reality is you need to connect with them first, you need to show them respect first, and then you're going to get it back. And we'll talk a lot more about what that looks like over the, you know, the multitude of episodes here. So that's all fine and dandy, Daryl. That's great. I get it. Maybe. But from a tactical perspective, how do we build respect amongst the team? How do we give somebody respect? How do we do that? Well, there's two concepts and they're, these are specifics. But before we get into it, it also presupposes that you kind of you know leadership 2.0 and leadership 2.0 is not where the leader um is on the top right so the respect goes up just because the leader is there the team doesn't necessarily exist solely to support the leader it's actually the other way around where the leader is at the bottom of the pyramid and the entire team is being supported by the leader so that's the that's a really really important premise that you have to wrap your head around so if you get there then the next part of this will be like super simple so the first tactic or one tactic to build respect amongst your team is to use what we call the power paradox power paradox. All right. And what the hell is that? Well, it means you gain more power and influence by giving it away. Okay. I swear I said that correctly. All right. The power paradox, you actually get more respect, influence and power as a leader by giving it away. Hmm. Interesting. Well, really what we're saying is when I give the respect away, when I give a task away, when I give my influence away to somebody else, what I'm really saying to them is I'm empowering you to make a decision. I'm empowering you to run this particular project. I'm empowering you to carry out this task or these tasks. That's what you're saying. You're giving them empowerment. And now with that empowerment comes just inherently the fact that you obviously trust them. You obviously value them. You obviously appreciate them. And when we start talking about appreciation and we talk about, uh, giving, trusting them, we're really talking about building respect and that's what the power paradox is. So as a leader, execute and exercise the power paradox, give power away, and you'll actually get way, way more back. Now there's going to be caveats to that, of course, and we'll cover those off, um, in, in further episodes, but that's essentially what the power paradox is. If you want to build respect, give it away and you'll get so much more respect and influence back. The second tactic or technique really involves what I call two questions of the connected leader. That is, they're pretty simple. What are you working on? 
and what support can I give you? What are you working on and what support can I give you? This is the exact antidote to micromanagement. So if you want to destroy, erode, explode, respect, influence, micromanage. Be detail-oriented. Be hands-on. Micromanagement and respect, they do not exist together. So by asking the two questions of the connected leader, what are you working on and what support can I give you? What it's doing is you're taking a very hands-off approach because again, just like with the power paradox, you're telling somebody, look, I value you. I'm listening to you. I trust you. All of those things. So just that is what's happening. That is what's going on with regard to respect, influence, and the power paradox giving away and those two simple questions. And here's the beautiful thing too. Somebody certainly appreciates the help if they want it. So there's kind of a double-edged sword is laissez-faire, do I leave somebody alone and then they feel unsupported or do I totally get involved in micromanagement? Well, these two questions really help bridge that gap and find that balance. And so when you're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting, ask them, what are you working on? What support can I give you? Or you're walking by their desk. What are you working on? What support can I give you? When you're dealing with your partner, your spouse, what are you grappling with here? What support can I give you? You'll see that your respect influence will skyrocket. So the takeaway for this week, use the paradox, power paradox once. So remember, give the power away, give the respect away, and you're going to get way more back in return because you're empowering people. So do that once. And then ask somebody on your team or your entire team or your partner the two connected leadership questions. What are you working on and how can I support you? Okay, pretty simple takeaways. I do ask you, I'm, I'm giving you a specific call to action. That is join our Facebook group. So I want to reach a critical mass of X amount of folks. I got the number up here. Uh, and then once I get enough requests there, and I'll open it up and then we'll be able to have a lot more frank conversation around connected leadership and what being a connected leader looks like. And further to that, I challenge you this. Be a connected leader. Don't be just a manager or leader. Influence through respect and not fear. Lead with inspiration and not exasperation. Be self-aware, facilitate, don't dictate. Be vulnerable and expect vulnerability. Be empathetic and expect empathy. Be compassionate and that includes self-compassion and expect compassion back. Be calm. Manage the stress of yourself and those around you and expect calmness around you. So in summary, a connected leader is one who connects and then leads. So in the next episode, we'll talk more and uh, we're going to talk about Captain America and why he's such a popular leader and why he has so much like, tremendous respect and influence that we've talked about. Here's the thing. It has to do with values. So the next conversation that we're having, the next time you and I go face to face live, We'll be talking about why values are so important when even backing it up, what values are and why they're so important and why they're integral to respect influence. So remember to subscribe, share and comment, and we'll see you next week.